Hello all, this is uh, Randall Root, and in this video we'll be looking at uh, why it's true a associate entity table is the preferred way to model a many-to-many -many relationship. So I've made this little demo here and hopefully this will help folks. I get a lot of questions about um, why you have this associate entity table. Here's, uh, here's an example. So actually, before I go any further, let me uh, clean up the demo from previous. Okay, I'm removing the tables from the tempdb, and I'm going to focus on the tempdb, making sure that in the drop-down box I choose that, uh, because these are really just uh, throwaway tables. <clears throat> now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two tables that would commonly have a many-to-many -many relationship. So it'd be pretty common that a title might be written by many authors and an author might write many titles. So the relationship between these two tables, or as they call them in, at design time, uh, entities, they, uh, that's definitely a many-to-many -many relationship. And let's insert some data. Now we have the data in there. And you know, you're supposed to, on every table you make, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to create a primary key uh, by selecting a column or columns um, as the unique identifier for each row. A very common one would be artificial identifiers like title ID or author ID. And that's certainly what we'd want to do. So I'll go ahead and try to uh, create this primary key constraint on the title ID and you'll note I get an error message and the reason is is that the column allows null values and you cannot include uh, a primary key constraint on a column that would allow nulls and if you don't specify the default is allow nulls. Now there's design reasons for that certainly uh, a null value is uh, an unknown uh, value you don't know that it doesn't represent zero it just re represents we don't know what it is and uh, it is considered a design mistake to include a null value in any column that you would be using to identify one row from the next or a primary key column so we'll have to resolve that and it's not too hard to resolve we just alter the table and the column in each table to not include nulls. The syntax looks like this and with just a, a couple lines of code we've resolved that and now we can actually go ahead and put the primary key uh, constraint on the titles table and the authors table based on their identifier uh, identity columns. Okay so now we have a couple tables that have a many-to-many -many relationship and they're designed along the lines of standard normalization practice. Well, let's take a minute here. Oops, sorry, I went too far. And look at the data. And unfortunately, right now, we don't have a way to discern which title is written by with which author. And so we need to find a way to model that. Now, if you have been working with spreadsheets, one of the first things you might try, and this happens with uh, developers or just SQL developers or just learning how to, to create databases. What you'll see people try is they'll try to just combine the tables into one table. And it's not that you can't do that. You can it's just not considered a best practice. And so I'll go ahead and model it like that, model it like that, and I will insert some data in there. And um, according to my little data, the first title, title one, was written by author one. But that same title was written by author two, so apparently there were two authors on that same title one. Now the second title was written by author one. And he was a solo, or she was a solo author of that, that particular book. 
in the case of the third author we have, there are no books associated with it. And uh, now I'm just making up this data uh, to kind of demonstrate the, the process. I don't have any actual real life example here. But uh, in my mind, we know that the author exists, but they haven't finished making the book yet. And so we don't have uh, an identifier for the book. We don't have uh, necessarily the, the title for the book. So the best we can do right now is we can put a couple null values in. And one, one thing you find when you, you try to model it like a spreadsheet is you often see a lot of null values pop out. So if I look at the data, the good news is, is I can see pretty quickly that Title I was written by two authors. That kind of pops out, and you know, I, I can see that. And Author 3 does exist, but he, uh, he or she doesn't have a, a title. So it's not that it doesn't work. It does. It's just not considered a best practice, and let me talk about why. First of all, the rules of database design, normalization in particular, kind of specify that every table that you make should have a primary key. And that the columns that are associated with that primary key are solely about the primary key, not just a part of it, but the, the whole primary key, and nothing but that primary key. And so we would have to look around to see what would qualify for that. In this design, we have a title ID and we have an author ID. And if we put the combination together uh, as a composite, they would easily represent the unique combination of title and author and provide us with, well, a unique identifier. But there's a couple of problems with that. First, as we've seen, you are not allowed to have nulls in the primary key. Can, so when you make a primary key constraint or in design, having a primary key. So while there is no nulls in authors, there is a null in title. And that's, that's considered a, a red flag. You should not be having any null values there. Another aspect that uh, is incorrect is that the author name is not about the combination of the title and author. It's solely about the author. And the title um, name is solely about the title, not about the combination of title and author. And because of that, that is also a red flag indicating that this wouldn't be correct. If you were to put a composite key on title ID and author ID, it, the, the table would not be designed so that um, you'd have a key and everything was related to that key and nothing but that key. So that this means that our design is not uh, in conjunction with the standard rules of normalization which most people use for database design. So while it does work there is a better way and this is the kind of approved way to do it. What you do is you create a single table uh, that will model that relationship, the many-to-many -many relationship. And uh, they refer to this as an associative entity and you also may hear it called a bridge table, a junction table. And why they call it associative entity is because think of it this way. When you want to try to look up which author is associated with which title, you look at the association. So you can associate which author is by which title by looking at their identifiers. And tell you the truth, that's really all we need. So we can create this second version of this, this table, in which case all we have is the author ID and the title ID. Now, I'll just go ahead, since I know that I'm going to use the combination uh, as a, uh, a primary key, I'll just go ahead and specify not null. Oops, looks like I didn't highlight everything. And then I'll go ahead and put the primary key You'll notice that um, the standard design is you put the primary key across all of the uh, columns that make up the um, the entity, the associative entities junction. And then I'll insert some values. Now, um, we've got the data in there, 
but the only problem is that if you try to look at this data all by itself, so I guess I wanted that up there so we could look at it all by itself first. We can't easily see the author's name. Now, we can certainly see that that first title was written by two authors. But we probably, as a human, would like to see more. Computer doesn't care. But for us uh, first humans, we like to actually see uh, names spelled out instead of just identifiers. Still, if we run these three statements, we can see that. We can see that title one was called, or title ID one is actually called title one, and uh, author ID one is called author uh, one and author two, etc. So we can actually look that up. And of course, if you'd like to display it to end users uh, in a more, you know, report friendly view, you would just go through and make a, a join. Now, if I indicate a left join when I write, write my join statement, any table on the left hand side will show all of its data regardless if there regardless of if there is a match in other words if i have a a title that shows up in the titles table but it doesn't show up in that associative entity bridge table that's all right you can give me that title we don't have one of those but we do have an author that i whose id does not show up in that associative bridge table oops and this is a copy and paste error i just noticed this should be author ID. Hmm. So by putting the word right, anything on the right hand side of the equal sign will show all the values. And that way we can see author 3 is still there. They just don't have any titles associated with it. And if you'll notice, this report query is showing the same data that we, we got when we went through and combined it into a single table. It's just that we're not storing the data that way. The database is not designed uh, with uh, to allow these null values and it is designed to have the primary key uh, constraint uh, on the tables as it should be. So the, um, the moral of the story here is that whenever you find a many-to-many -many relationship you want to go ahead and create this associative entity table. You want to use that to model the relationship and it is indeed considered the best practice to professionally design your database. I hope you found this uh, video useful and uh, hopefully you'll, I'll be able to talk to you in future videos uh, coming up.